Now it's time to dive in and really get our hands dirty to find out how to build menus and price lists in QReveal. Most of the action is going to take place under this menu item called Menu Builder. The first thing we need to do is create a location. Now, even if your business only has one location, we still need to actually create that location. This is what the main location page looks like when you don't have any locations created. You'll notice that there's a Create Location button in the middle, as well as a Create New up in the upper right. This middle button will only appear when there's no locations created yet, so be sure to remember to look in the upper right hand corner when creating locations in the future. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I'm taken to the new location screen. You'll notice that this slider is currently set to draft and grayed out. This means that your customers would not be able to see any of the content associated with this location. Clicking it turns it green and makes it live, which means they can now see the content. You most likely will want to leave your location in draft mode until you're ready to go live so that customers don't see your work in progress. Now there's a lot of fields to fill out, but a lot of them are optional. The first field to fill out is the name of the location. Now if you only have one location, you can use something like main, or just your company name, or perhaps the city name that it's in. The description and long description field are both optional. However, they're a great way to give your customers a little bit more information about your business. We also offer an area here to enter your full address. One thing that you're going to notice under all the pages in the menu builder is a dark gray box like this one. This is where you manage how different pieces of content are assigned to each other. This will become much more clear as you build out your menus, but it's important to make note of it now. Under the extra details box, you can customize the last part of the URL of your menu. As you can see here, main has already been filled in because I typed that as the name of the location. But you can always change this to anything you'd like. But please note you can't use spaces or special symbols. Under this is the time zone menu. We recommend that all businesses set the correct time zone when they get started, just because it's something that can easily be forgotten later and can cause some issues once you start using the features that require time zone settings. You also have three additional options to pick from. The first is the Show Featured button. This adds a link that lets your customers see all of the featured items you're currently offering all in one place. This can include daily specials, featured dishes, or new products and services. Under this is the Show Favorites button. This puts an icon next to each item in your menu or price list that customers can tap to create a running list of items that they're interested in. This can make ordering a lot easier and more efficient when that time comes. You can also opt to show a legal disclaimer on every page of your menu or price list. This is a great place to put those disclaimers about raw or undercooked meat and seafood, as well as any other policies or procedures that your business follows that you want customers to be aware of. If your account allows image uploading, there's also three images you can upload here. The first is your location main image which can be an exterior or interior shot of your business, something that kind of shows it off and makes it look appealing and interesting to customers. You'll notice that above all of our image upload fields, we give you the pixel widths and height that it works best for the image in question. You'll also be able to upload two versions of your logo, one for the light theme and one for dark themes. The light theme is typically a standard version of your logo that uses black or darker text and imagery alongside of it. In other words, it's one that shows up well against a light colored background. You can always read the full text here for more information about this as well as the dimensions that you need to use. The logo for the dark theme, meanwhile, is used against a black background. So obviously you don't want to have any black text or darker colored elements in the logo. In general, it's actually best to kind of turn every in general, it's best to turn everything white or a lighter, brighter color that has high contrast against black. Again, you can also reference the small text above the image upload field for the requirements for sizing. When I'm done creating all of this work, I can either click the save button in the bottom right or there's also one in the upper right. And there you go, the first location has been created. You'll notice this message here that reminds you to create menus and assign them to this location. So let's do that now. Again, I'm going under Menu Builder and clicking Menus. I'll click Create New. 
and give the menu a name, a description, and you can also fill in a short description and a long description, but these are optional. You'll also notice that there's this dark gray box to help manage assignments. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Under extra details, you can edit the URL and also show the featured button, favorite button, or search bar. There's also the opportunity to upload a background image. Again, take note of the pixel width and height suggestions. Back to the location assignment box. Because there's only one location created called main, it's the only one that shows up here and it's automatically been checked. In all of these location assignment dropdowns, you'll want to make sure that each row is checked and has the green indicator icon, otherwise it won't show up. You'll also notice that under the location assignment, there's an area to help control what categories appear in the menu. However, this account doesn't have any categories yet, so there's nothing to do here. It's just important to take note of it now. So now, let's click Save to create this menu. We're now ready to create a category. So I go to the Menu Builder and click Categories. I'll give it a name and I can give it an optional description and long description. You can also give it a background image here using the dimensions as suggested above. Now take a look at the dark gray assignment box. Because we're at the category level, we're going to assign this category to a menu. To do that, click the drop down menu and select dinner. This menu category will now appear on the menu Dinner. You'll also notice that this area lets you assign items to the category. However, because there's no items created yet, that's not an option yet. But again, it's important to take note. I'm going to click Save. And now go under Menu Builder and Items so we can actually create those items. I'll give the item a name. Now descriptions on items are optional, but they do show up a little bit more prominently. You should think of the first description field as a one-line brief description of the item. The short description field appears under each item's name, just like on a printed menu. Because our menus are digital and don't have a space limitation, you can also add more details such as ingredients or other special things that customers need to be aware of in the long description field. The long description is only visible if the customer clicks to view the full detail of the item. The next step is to give our item a price. This menu is in US dollars. However, if you need to change the currency, you can always click the settings link here and make that change. We're going to come back to the category box in just a moment, but let's take a quick look at three other options here. If I click the limited availability option, this puts an icon next to the item, letting the customer know that this item could run out during the course of business. I can also click the featured item option. This puts another icon next to each item name, letting customers know that this might be a house specialty, current special, or other special item that you have for sale. If you have the featured link option activated on your menu or location, it will also cause this item to appear in that area. Finally, we have two image options here. One is the large main item image. This is typically a product shot of your dish or product. Again, take note of the image suggestions here. Below that is the icon. This is a square image that's used on category pages to give a preview of what the item looks like. If you don't upload one here, but you do have an item image, our system will automatically attempt to crop the main item image down into a square. But this option allows you to upload a unique icon that fits your needs. Let's jump back up to category assignment. You'll notice in the dropdown that the category hamburgers is now visible. So if I check that, this item will now appear in hamburgers. You'll again notice that modifiers is shown in the dark gray box, meaning that you can assign modifiers to this item. However, we don't have any modifiers yet, but we'll come back to that. To create a new modifier, I go to the menu builder, then modifiers. I then hit create new and have an opportunity here to enter the information. Modifiers can optionally affect the price of an item. For example, 
you can charge $2 to add bacon to a hamburger. Now let's say you offer the opportunity to make a salad vegetarian by removing the chicken. You can type a negative price in this field to show that the price will become lower when the customer orders it. There's also the option here to show the plus or minus icons next to each modifier. Typically leaving this on is the easiest way for customers to understand how their modifiers might affect the price. Modifiers can also have an icon image, but not a full size image. In the dark gray assignment box, you'll notice that I can also assign this to an item that I've already created. Because items are the lowest level in the hierarchy of QReveal, there's no other assignment option on modifiers. So let's save this. As you work your way through QReveal, building new locations, menus, categories, items, and modifiers, you'll likely need to understand better how this all fits together. To show you that, here's an example of an account that has two locations created, main and second. You'll notice in this column that the main location already has dinner assigned to it. However, the second location doesn't have any menus assigned to it. To resolve that, click the edit button, and you'll notice that we're now editing the second location. Let's imagine that this location serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, where the main location only serves dinner. So clicking the drop down displays breakfast, dinner, and lunch menus that have already been created. Because this location serves all three, I'm going to check each box and then click Save. If we go back to the locations page, we'll now see that the second location has menus assigned to it. Because there's more than two, I do have to click this view menus option to expand and see the menus that have been assigned. Jumping over to the menus page, I can now see the three meal menus, breakfast, dinner, and lunch, as well as the locations they're assigned to. However, you'll notice that only the dinner menu has been assigned any categories. Breakfast and lunch do not have any. We'll start with breakfast and hit edit. And the first thing that you'll notice is that the location can also be controlled from this page. Because the second location is the only one that serves breakfast, I can just leave second checked and leave main unchecked. However, you can always adjust those settings on this page. Now for the categories in this menu. Clicking the drop down shows the three categories that have been created. Obviously, omelets is the best option for a breakfast menu, so I'll select that and click Save. Going back to the main menu page now shows that the breakfast menu is shown only at the second location and has the category omelets assigned to it. Now, let's look at the lunch menu. I'll click the Edit button, and again, you'll notice that it is only assigned to the second location. Clicking the category dropdown now shows all three categories that are active. For lunch, this imaginary restaurant is going to serve both entrees and hamburgers. So I'm checking both, but leaving omelets unchecked. Click Save. Going back to the main menu page, you can now see that the lunch menu is assigned to the second location with the categories of both entrees and hamburgers. Of course, it makes sense that dinner would also have entrees. So I'm going to modify that by clicking Edit. And you can see in the first, both the main and second location show dinner because both locations serve dinner. For the category dropdown, hamburgers is already assigned, but now I want to add entrees. So I click the dropdown and check the box next to entrees. Click Save. And if I go back to the main menu page, you'll now see that dinner is assigned to both main and the second location and has the categories of both hamburgers and entrees. The same principles apply to the category page. Here you can see that the entrees category is assigned to both lunch and dinner but does not have any items assigned. The hamburgers category is assigned to both dinner and lunch and has the deluxe burger already assigned to it. Meanwhile omelets is assigned to the breakfast menu but also has nothing assigned to it. So let's click Edit, and you'll notice there's a yellow warning here letting you know that there's no items in the category. To solve this, I'm going to click the drop-down menu and click the Veggie Omelette option. Click Save, and you'll note that the Veggie Omelette is now assigned to the category Omelettes. And I can verify this by seeing that the Veggie Omelette is now assigned to the Omelettes category 
on the breakfast menu. Now let's resolve the entrees issue. Click Edit. I'm going to assign the grilled steak entree. Click Save. And I can verify at the Categories page that the grilled steak is now on the Entrees category on both the lunch and dinner menu. Items can have modifiers assigned to them if this feature is available in your account. As you can see here, I have a deluxe burger on sale for $8.99 assigned to the category Hamburgers. And it has the modifier Remove Chicken, which doesn't really make sense. So let's resolve that. I'll click Edit, and under the Modifier option, I'm going to uncheck Remove Chicken and instead check Add Grilled Onions for $1. Click Save. Going back to the Items page, we can see the Deluxe Burger now has the modifier Add Grilled Onion. Next, we'll work with Grilled Steak. Click the Edit button. And, like the other assignments, you'll notice that you can also manage the category assignment from the item level. So, if for some reason I wanted to put the grilled steak in the hamburgers category, I could check the box here. However, that doesn't make sense, so I'll uncheck it and jump down to the modifiers assignment menu. You'll notice here that add grilled onions is still a modifier, so I'll click that. Now, you may have noticed that the $1 upcharge for grilled onions has been added to both the grilled steak and the hamburger. QReveal lets you recycle and reuse the same modifiers on more than one item. The same is true for all of the other levels of content as well, so it can avoid a lot of repetition, especially on large menus. Under Modifiers, I can now see that Add Grilled Onions is assigned to the, both the Deluxe Burger and the Grilled Steak, but Remove Chicken is not assigned to any item. If I wanted to modify that, I could click Edit. You'll see a yellow warning message notifying me that the modifier is not assigned to any items. So I'm going to add it to the veggie omelet. Go back to the modifier screen to verify our work. And you can see that veggie omelet now has the option to remove chicken. 